gently close your eyes. Om, Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Ubunatu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejas Vinavadi Tamas Tumavid Vishavahai Today is a special occasion. We are celebrating the a beautiful festival called Guru Purnima. It is celebrated for the birthday of Sage Vyasa, who is the compiler of the Vedas, who is the author of the Mahabharata, the great Bhagavad Gita. So we take this opportunity to pay our gratitude our respects, our reverence to the great lineage of sages and saints, rishis and munis, yogis and swamis. We take this opportunity to express our thankfulness to great league of teachers, mentors, authors, friends and colleagues who helped us in improving our quality of life, who helped us in making better choices in life, who helped us in experiencing peace and happiness. So that is Guru Purnima, the significance of Guru Purnima. Guru is a Sanskrit word taken from two Sanskrit words, Gu and Ru, which means dispeller of darkness remover of ignorance. Therefore, all those sources which has helped us in improving ourselves, experiencing peace and tranquility, we offer our thankfulness, our gratitude, our reverence, our respect on this monumental day. We're doing it in advance. It's going to be later part of the month where this actual celebration happens, but we thought anything good let's do it a little bit in advance so every time for the guru purnima we take up a topic which is very relevant for each one of us and we discuss how it can be implemented how it can help us in our daily life so the topic for today is diet for the mind the world is seeking diets and various other aspects so this Guru Purnima, the topic is what should be your diet for the mind? So this lecture will have various topics. We will start with what is the mind. Then we will discuss the facts about the mind. Then the important aspect, the difficult, difficult conversations with the mind. Then the three types of mind which each one of us experiences and uh, the crux of the topic, the diet for the mind, the diet plan for the mind will be discussed. And finally, some mind impressions, some takeaways for each one of us. So what is the mind? That's what we're going to start with. What is the mind? Mind is where your emotions, your feelings, both good and bad arise. Feelings and emotions like kindness, compassion, love, gratitude, thankfulness, forgiveness, or anger, jealousy, fear, greed, all those aspects arise from the mind. Feelings and emotions, both good and bad, arise from the mind. Next, the mind also produces likes and dislikes. You like yoga, you like devotional music, you dislike junk food. So, we are all nothing but a bundle of likes and dislikes. Your mind produces likes and dislikes. And also another aspect is your mind creates impulses. Many of us fall and fall a victim to our own impulses. Somebody tells something, there's an impulse. Just, you want to give a piece of your mind. And 
so the mind produces likes and dislikes mind also creates impulses mind is the source of your feelings and emotions in sanskrit the mind is called manas and in english or in poetic language you use the you equate the mind to a heart that's why when you have no emotion they say you're a heartless person so mind is manas in sanskrit heart for the poetic inclination people now important facts about the mind friends each one of us are born with the mind every one of us are born with the mind in fact we use the mind much before we start to walk and talk and run you express your emotions to it but fully the mind is fully available after a certain period of time and by the age of 5 6 the mind is available to you so that is the mind you know, we are all born with the mind none is ex- none none is exempt from it then the mind has been the central theme for all scriptures with re- reference to all philosophers as well in all scriptures the mind is the central theme of you know they deal with and even in all with reference to philosophers they deal with the mind so that is the importance and relevance mind has in scriptures and philosophers then there's a beautiful statement the fact about the mind there is nothing in the world that can trouble you as much as your mind i repeat there is nothing in this world that can trouble you as much as your mind they say if only you know the power of one negative thought you will never entertain it at the same time if only you know the power of one positive thought you will never cease to embrace it so that's that is the fact of the mind it's a central theme for all scriptures and philosophers and uh, it is one thought can derail you at the same time one thought can uplift you the poet john milton in his epic paradise lost makes a beautiful statement he says your mind in its own place can make a hell out of a heaven or a heaven out of a hell it's all in your mind i repeat your mind in its own place can make a hell out of a heaven or a heaven out of a hell it's all in your mind therefore friend the fact is heaven and hell are not geographical locations but state of your mind you feel heaven the mind feels like that peaceful tranquil you feel like hell we will go through agitations and sufferings and the great swami vekananda the apostle of vedanta he made a beautiful statement he said conquer your mind you will conquer the world fall a prey to your mind you become a victim of the world one of the most profound statements conquer your mind you will conquer the world fall a prey to your mind you become a victim of your world so these are all the facts about the mind friends i wish you get it right each one of us are born with the mind it is a central theme for all scriptures and all philosophers it is a the fact is if only you know the power of one negative thought you never entertain it if only you know the potential of one positive thought you never cease to embrace it heaven and hell are not geographical locations they are state of mind the whole aspect is can you make your mind like heaven that's why they say heaven should be a place on earth and the great way can the conquer your mind you conquer the world the whole spiritual journey the whole path of self evolution is nothing but harnessing your mind supplementing the mind improving the quality of thinking with your intellect developing dexterity in action so the entire spiritual journey is 
dealing with the mind not suppressing it not uh, stifling it not not denying it but using it for a a better purpose in fact you use the mind and make it lighter in such a way that you can transcend the mind that's these are all the facts about the mind friends let us not miss out on in if you miss out you do a great deal of injustice to your potential now as i mentioned difficult conversations with the mind difficult conversations with the mind sometimes you need to have these tough conversations when i say difficult conversation conversations which provokes your thinking that's why it said difficult not in a way of you know troubling oneself we need to provoke our thinking otherwise most of us are stuck in our comfort zone number 1 are you in control of your mind or is your mind controlling you if you are in control of the mind it means that you have fortified your intellect you are aligned with spiritual path you have high value systems and you are putting in consistent effort as i mentioned if you are in control of your mind it's evident that you have a strong intellect there's a difference between intelligence and intellect as my guru mr swami parthasarthi ji says intelligence is gained from an external source through universities through schools through courses you become well informed in one or more subjects that's intelligence a person could be very intelligent in uh, civil engineering a person could be brilliant in uh, dentistry a person could be uh, profound in uh, in banking it is it is intelligence or intelligence is pertaining to a particular field of activity a strong intellect is it means you have a a clearer set of thinking in all areas of life not just pertaining to one aspect you need an intellect to develop intelligence but much more than that you need a strong intellect to deal with all areas of your life so then if you have a strong intellect you can control the mind you can utilize the mind well that's why i said if you are able to control your mind if you are able to supervise the mind well you have a strong intellect you are spiritually aligned you have high value systems and you are a person who puts in consistent effort in becoming the best version of yourself what these masters call a shraddha consistency otherwise if the mind controls you you need to have tough conversations with yourself few questions you got to ask yourself the conversation is you are having a conversation with the mind because it is controlling you few questions as i mentioned what are the areas you are having difficulty in developing acceptance ask this question to you to yourself what are the areas you are having difficulty in developing acceptance non acceptance creates turmoil in our life are you dealing with anger fear and sadness in a proper way or are these factors have power over you i repeat are you dealing with anger fear and sadness in the right ways in the proper ways or are these factors like anger fear sadness have a power over you do they overpower you that's what if they overpower you you need to gain some control over your mind if you have non acceptance you got to deal with your mind carefully what next what are the layers of shame you need to let go each one goes through this uh, difficulty at times what are the layers of shame you need to let go something happened 10 years ago 20 years ago have you are very able to let go of that shameful act if not your mind needs to be controlled by a strong intellect 
then what areas of your life are unresolved incomplete and it still troubles you what are the areas of your life if it is still unresolved it is incomplete and these experiences are continuing to trouble you then your mind needs to be handled properly now the next the next question the difficult conversation are you able to practice self forgiveness i can understand forgiving others is difficult and forgiving yourself could be far more difficult so are you able to practice self forgiveness if not your mind needs to be dealt with gracefully next are you a victim of overthinking meaning with overthinking means you going over the same thoughts and experiences again and again you are not able to resolve these experiences you are not able to bring a uh, a closure to certain experiences you are you are in this uh, habit of overthinking over uh, analyzing over things which you have no control which you cannot resolve so are you a victim of overthinking watch out that's one aspect we've got to be where the mind is on overdrive that has to be controlled then are you predominantly anxious about the future are you being worried about the past and anxious about the future that drains your mental energy friends therefore you have to be careful you have to control your mind then are you fearing change meaning anyone who who is fearing change is resisting growth they are either stuck in a comfort zone and they refuse to come out of that scenario so i'm these are all some of the difficult conversations next are you trying to please everyone you have this uh, weakness for impressing others you want to be in the good books of one and all you are a, a victim of other people's opinion other people's views another conversation are you thinking that you are not good enough that your life has no purpose this perennial suspicion i am not good enough i am not uh, that proper in certain things and my life seems to have no purpose so if you have all these questions and you think yes i am i am suffering with it i am being pulled on by all these questions all these all these questions then it's essential that your mind needs to be put on a diet you have to strengthen your intellect as i mentioned me what are the areas of your uh, areas where you are finding it very difficult to develop acceptance are you dealing with fear anger sadness in a graceful manner or are they are they overpowering you what are the areas of shame which we need to let go and you are not able to let go are you able to practice self forgiveness those incomplete experiences those unresolved desires does it still continue to agitate you are you a victim of overthinking you run through an experience again and again with no respite with na- with an incapacity to bring a completion to it a victim of overthinking you may be fearing change meaning you are resisting growth you are comfortable or you are you are too comfortable in what they call as a comfort zone are you a people pleaser you want to be in the good books of one and all you are a victim of other people's opinions views do you think that uh, you are not good enough for many things in life and your life has no purpose then friends your mind has to be put on a diet plan a strict diet plan it is, it is that's what i say it's very very important 
and uh, see if you go through these things then observe your emotions these are all the general uh, scenarios many many of us may go through now a further analysis in in this difficult conversations is observing your emotions if you are experiencing bitterness it just shows that you need to heal in certain areas where because you're holding on to strong judgments it is that is why that the bitterness a person experiences if all these questions if you are in control of the mind you have a strong intellect you are a you have a spiritual alignment but if all these questions yes i go through this yes i go through this yes i'm going through this then the resultant emotions are these bitterness it shows that there are quite a few areas you need to heal because you're holding on to strong judgments another emotion is resentment it shows that those unresolved issues in the past it keeps coming up and you are not i mean and you are not experiencing the present in the way it should be experienced resentment guilt shows that you are living a life according to the others expectations of you rather than you want to live a life according to yourself guilt you 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 are you are servicing others opinion of you others expectation of you and you are not servicing your own expectation what you want to become you are not doing it you are servicing others expectation of you therefore there's a guilt you experience then disappointment you're putting in efforts in the areas of interest but you are not getting desired results the way you expect it to happen that's why with all the difficult conversations if you say yes i'm going through it yes i'm going through it then you will experience bitterness you're holding on to judgments you have to heal from it resentment it shows that there's a lot of unresolved issues within you therefore no the present is not so comfortable for you guilt you are you are servicing others expectation of you you are not living a life on your own accord in simple terms you're not being true to yourself disappointment you are putting in effort in areas of your interest but you're not getting desired results the results you expect is not happening disappointment with the difficult conversations and the tough emotions you experience friends there's no other choice but to put your mind on a strong diet that is why i said no see if you are experiencing these emotions and if you are run through these questions and you you say yes i am going through it you will predominantly experience two types of mind one is a what they call as a restless mind you will have a restless mind meaning restless mind is one where the mind can never be quiet my guru used to say if you keep there is a cone when you keep when you keep it upside down you when you place it on its tip it can never remain static it will fall down it is it will fall down so that's the condition of a person who's self centered who's ignorant who's dependent on the world and they go through all these agitations the second th- type of a mind is called a imperfect mind imperfect mind is one which belongs to a person who is unselfish who is able to accommodate the interest of others but predominantly they could be peaceful quiet serene but one negative experience one comment one uh, view can topple their peace and tranquility generally they are okay so most people are oscillating between a restless mind and an imperfect mind when i say a restless mind it belongs to a person who's full of desires a lot of unfulfilled desires who are also self-centered selfish and as a result the world doesn't cater to a, a selfish person and the mind gets agitated frustrated like a cone which is resting on its tip it can never remain static it will fall down it will it will be uh, uneasy 
a person who is self-centered dependent on the world ignorant of spiritual values is restless too many things topple them and a person who is unselfish seems to experience happiness but they go through trouble because of one negative experience one wrong comment one uh, inappropriate statement it can topple them so that's what i'm saying with the difficult conversations as a result tough emotions you go you may experience then you are experiencing these two qualities of the mind these two conditions of the mind but a person who is having a strong intellect the spiritual alignment the priorities are right they put in consistent effort they experience a perfect mind imagine the cone resting on its base on its base it's static it is it is uh, calm it is clear it is uh, tranquil a mind of a, a selfless person is tranquil perfect serene that's what i'm saying and an in imperfect mind is like a cone resting on one of its side it remains static but when you push the cone it starts oscillation oscillating the oscillations continue for a while and then it comes to a standstill that's it a person who is unselfish is relatively peaceful but one comment one negative comment one a tough experience topples their equanimity so friends it's essential that you understand all these and then get to us what we call as a perfect mind where you have an absolute control over your thoughts emotions and actions that's why i said man a perfect mind is one which has this definitive areas of control a uh, definite areas of control a uh, person with a perfect mind has this area well protected which is their attitude the attitude is beautiful in is in fact everything in our life is is reflected in the attitude we adopt what is attitude without changing anything externally with a slight change in the way you think feel and function everything about your life changes if you have the difficult conversation with your mind when you say yes i am going through all these issues and you have a restless mind your attitude will be very poor you'll be blaming everyone for whatever you're going through so definite areas of control the mind should exercise is your attitude attitude as i mentioned without changing anything externally with a slight change in the way you think feel and function everything about your life changes then a definitive area of control is your boundaries we should have we should set our boundaries at the material level at the physical level at the emotional and the intellectual levels of a personality set boundaries stick to that then if you are able to control it again whenever we use the word control it is not denial it is not frustrating yourself it is not torturing yourself whenever we use the word control it's an intelligent utilization of resources that's why set your boundaries the at the material level you know, cap your expenses emotional level physical level intellectual level i mean are you doing the physical physical well being properly are you is your emotions right either are you taking in fresh knowledge regularly i mean it is uh, as i mentioned your boundaries set your boundaries and finally the, your definite areas of control must be your words your your actions your effort absolute control you should have on your words they say once you have spoken you can only be forgiven not forgotten once you have spoken those words you can only be forgiven not forgotten therefore watch your words i mean it should be an area of control they say speak when you're angry you make the you will make the greatest speech you'll ever regret the definite areas of control using the intellect okay, in dealing with the mind one is your words your actions and your efforts so with a a perfect mind or when you 
when you are moving from a restless mind to an imperfect mind and towards a perfect mind you are embracing this definite areas of control attitude you're able to control your attitude control your eye you're able to control your attitude and your boundaries you're able to set your boundaries properly material physical emotional intellectual and you're able to control your words your efforts and your actions now we are getting into the the crux of our guru purnima lecture your diet plan for your mind your diet plan for the mind all these difficult conversations which i highlighted and the emotions the subsequent emotions you go through which results in the the type of mind you are experiencing restless or imperfect you know all these questions it should set a direction to your thinking that's why all these philosophers all these masters they said you know, you, you should become the subject of your own study as the great master say know thyself know thyself when you're having these difficult conversation with the mind you're being that you are an extrovert but when you which means what what is an extrovert in the philosophical terms extrovert is one who is focused on the world uh, an extrovert is one who blames the world for everything they are going through from being an extrovert you slowly start working on yourself that's why you take responsibility you are blaming everyone else for whatever you are going through and you, now when you have these conversations when you observe the emotions you go through and you start taking responsibility for your choices and your actions that's when you slowly shift being an introvert it, it is a it is a an introvert in the spiritual parlance in the path of self enrichment is one who is working on their mind who is improving on their intellect who is uh, trying to better their actions better their interactions with the world so that's that transfer that shift is essential that transformation is essential from being an extrovert from blaming everyone for whatever you're going through to slowly taking responsibility for your choices if it's my life then it's my responsibility so if i have to make choice i will take responsibility for the choices i execute so that's where the the diet plan is given to you so the first thing is now there are three uh steps to this in this diet plan number 1 is understanding it's like when i say the diet plan it is you the diet plan is what you know you start putting in effort which means you read books you attend lectures you go for spiritual retreats you go for group discussions you want to expand your mind you want to bring in clarity to your thinking so this is the process if your existing thoughts was good enough no problem but our existing thoughts and emotions are not good enough our present quality of thinking is not is not good enough to deal with the conversation which you had with yourself I meaning the difficult conversations the the negative emotions so you need to bring in better quality of thinking purer quality of emotions for that you may read books you may attend lectures you may watch these this kind of lectures or no podcast and uh, you work on yourself that's why they say the great uh, thinker blaise pascal he says all sufferings of humanity is due to the inability of an individual to sit in a place quietly and think i repeat all suffering of humanity is due to the inability of an individual to sit in a place quietly and think the great rumi said yesterday i was clever i wanted to change the world today i'm wise i'm changing myself he said this 850 years ago 
That's why the, on this Guru Purima day, we take this pledge to improve ourselves. The divin, divine source has given us all potential. We just have to use these potential to our best. That is why through reading, through listening, through reflection, contemplation, through the right satsang, through the, uh, the, the support of a mentor or a guru or a, or a master, if you are able to raise yourself, then there's a three prong, three stage of development, three part diet plan. The first, the first part to this diet plan is understanding, understanding, understand that whatever we do or avoid doing is to gain peace and happiness. A three-stage diet plan for the mind. <clears throat> Number one is understanding. Through that's why you know, through your interactions, through your books, through lectures, through the proper satsang, that understanding enhances. Understand that whatever you do or avoid doing it is designed to gain peace and happiness, whether it's business or the money you gain or the partner you are with. It, it, it's, it's all to gain pleasure and happiness. Number one. Next is understand that beyond a certain stage, money is just a number. So anything you gain, understanding now is anything you gain at the cost of your peace is no gain at all. In fact, it's a loss. Understand beyond the point, money is just a number. So anything you gain at the cost of your peace and happiness is no gain at all. Then we are in the first stage of the diet plan understanding. Understand that there are no such thing as perfect relationships. There's no such thing as perfect relationship. You are either in a progressive growth oriented relationship or you're in a stagnant, no effort relationship. I repeat, there is no such thing as perfect, beautiful relationship. You can make a relationship beautiful, but there's no such thing as absolutely perfect relationship. You're either in a progressive, growth-oriented, effort-infused relationship, or you're in a stagnant, effortless, monotonous relationship. Friends, understand life and relationships are always under construction. It is never complete. It is, a, therefore, either you are progressive or you are stagnant. Understand that in relationship. Then, understand that good physical health, progressive work, a home full of affection, concern, and kindness, you can't buy it. You have to earn it. You have to deserve it. I repeat, this understanding is paramount, friends. Good physical health, progressive work, reasonable wealth, a home full of affection, concern, kindness, compassion, you can't buy it. You can only earn it. You can only deserve it. This is a very important understanding. Next, next understanding which we should have is understand that life is present continuous. It is how you feel, how you think and function in the present moment it, which matters most. I repeat, life is present continuous. This present, this moment in the future date of time is that moment, is the future. Past is a indicator and future is, a, is an aspiration. So life is present continuous. It is how you feel, how you think and how you function 
in the present moment which makes all the difference understand friends temporary people give you permanent lessons nothing wrong with the temporary people but some of the temporary people give you permanent lessons and finally understand that a little less wealth with much more peace and tranquility of the mind is much much better than abundance of wealth with no peace at all i repeat let's understand that a little less wealth i'm not saying no wealth at all i'm saying a little less wealth with abundance of peace and tranquility of the mind is much more important needed than abundance of material wealth with no peace at all i wish we understand this much earlier in life therefore we don't go through regrets regrets so watch out friends this understanding you know kick starts your journey of becoming the best version of yourself in the right ways in the right ways the so the sec the first is understanding uh, for uh, the initial stage is the difficult conversations you have then comes the in the associated emotions due to the experiences of your life then the three conditions of the mind imp, uh, restless imperfect and perfect then the areas of control you have to exercise and then the diet plan which is you know, the three three part diet plan first is understanding as i mentioned understanding is uh, without clarity in understanding you're not going to move to the next step therefore the first one is understanding second stage in of the diet plan is awareness friends life has no sympathy for your emotions like petrol has no sympathy for a bad driver i wish petrol had sympathy for bad drivers or uh, what do you call appreciation for good drivers no petrol is neutral life has no sympathy for your emotions in simple terms awareness is let's have emotions which is beautiful which is glorious but let us not become emotional when you are emotional it drains you it it can even destroy you the emotional state of a person your clarity is not available when you are emotional you get delusional and speak all the wrong words make all the bad choices and perform all the wrong actions i repeat when you are emotional meaning the emotions have overpowered your mind now the emotion you are emotional meaning you are you being dictated by your emotions anger is one form of an emotional outburst fear is another form of an emotional state so let's say when you are emotional your clarity is not available to you you get delusional and speak all the wrong words you make all bad choices and you perform all wrong actions all negative emotions like anger fear worry anxiety result in emotional drama you find emotional drama happening everywhere at home at work at public places everywhere there is emotional drama just give it a thought has any emotional drama improved anything has it changed anything you're late for a a check in of a budget airline and you do a great deal of emotional drama nothing works all that we are saying is emotional drama changes nothing emotional drama changes nothing when emotions settle down when your mind slightly becomes calm and quiet use your intellect to ask yourself these questions emotional drama changes nothing it is what did what did i achieve through anger after the emotional drama is is over when the mind is relatively calm what did i achieve through anger what did i gain from my fear what did i 
gain from my ego? Did my fears and anxiety improve my experience? Being worried and anxious, did it change anything? What did I gain from my ego? What did I achieve through my anger? I wish we objectively asked this question. Lectures from others will be of no use unless you lecture to yourself. What well, Krishna says, you could be a great friend or your worst enemy. If you are being a great friend to yourself, you'll ask this question. What did I achieve through anger? What did I gain from my ego? Be, being worried and anxious, did it change my life? Did it improve my experiences? The answer is no. Nothing in your life has improved, become better because you got angry, because you got your ego involved, because you're fearful and worried. Nothing in your life has improved. No, not, only it didn't, not only it did nothing, it took away a good portion of your time, a good portion of your energy and it also you know, hijacked your clarity and peace. So, when you're emotional, you become self-destructive through your own negative emotions. You become self-destructive. You, you cause a great deal of harm to yourself much more. The way Lord Buddha says, he says, anger is like holding a ball of fire and throwing it on another person. For sure, the other person gets hurt. But in the process, you are burnt your hand. So, whatever begins in anger, ends in shame. For every minute you lose your anger, you lose 60 seconds of peace. Friends, emotional outbursts, emotional drama does nothing to, nothing to your life, except it takes away a good portion of your time, good portion of your uh, clarity, and it reduces the quality of relationship. You lose, re others lose respect for you. And all negative emotions has an impact on your well-being. The yogis say any emotional disease you put yourself through has an impact on the physical level or the other way around. If there is a physical disease, it could be an effect of an emotional disease you have put yourself through. So watch out. Watch out. Not for anyone else, for yourself. The diet plan, the first is understanding, the second is awareness. It is through awareness a lot of changes happen in friends. The problem is the lack of understanding and there's a lack of awareness. Therefore, the mind is predominant. Mind is predominant. So when you start strengthening your intellect by contemplation, by lectures, through these sessions, reading books, aligning with higher values, you will, you will observe that your understanding has become better, your awareness has improved, and as a result, the regrets are less. The mind, even if you falter, the way my guru says, even if you fall, you will fall like a tennis ball. You will bounce back much faster. You will not fall like a hot potato. So, friends, watch out, friends, watch out. And the the final part of the diet plan, as I mentioned, first is understanding, second is awareness, third is objectivity. Objectivity with proper understanding and acute awareness, your clarity in thinking and the pot potential of making better choices improves. Clarity in thinking results in your intellect available to you because your intellect is able to supervise the mind, control the mind. The mind goes doesn't go helter skelter. You are able to control and 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 uh, deal with the mind in a proper way. That's why I said. But it requires the difficult conversations. It requires understanding. It requires awareness and then the objectivity. So you know your. There is some level of clarity in thinking. 
there is this prevalence of intellect in most of your activities you become what they what we call as more objective you're not a victim of your likes and dislikes you're not a uh, a victim of your emotions and uh, you know feelings merely so objectivity objectivity means i'm further explaining to you means you are being a smart witness towards every thought and emotion i repeat objectivity means you are become you are being a smart witness to every thought word and emotion you understand you analyze you accept or reject every thought of every object or being that is objectivity you understand you are aware you are analyze then you accept or reject regarding every thought of every object or an individual nothing it is, it is nothing goes by just like that it has go it has gone through the filter of clarity and wisdom so that's objectivity friends i want to take the guidance of some of the great thinkers viktor frankl you know he a great thinker he says the one thing you can't take away from me is the way i choose to respond to what you do to me such one lovely words <laughs> the viktor frankl the one thing you can't take away from me is the way i choose to respond to what you do to me in simple terms whatever way the world deals with you you are you don't react aggressively you respond gracefully beautiful statement and he goes uh, goes along and say, makes another beautiful statement with victor frankl is between stimulus and response there is a space and in that space lies the power to choose and in that choice lies your freedom man growth what a profound monumental statement between stimulus whatever the world stimulus is what you take in through your the five senses eyes ears nose tongue and skin and the emotions of your mind and uh, your ego between stimulus the world provides you gives you that stimulus between stimulus and response from your intellect there is a space in that space lies your power to choose you can use your intellect you can control the mind and in that choice lies your freedom freedom from what freedom from all the troubles from all the agitations from all the misgivings the freedom in your choice lies your freedom and growth you become a better version of yourself you grow into the or the best version of yourself between stimulus and response there is the space friends that's objectivity and in that space lies your power to choose friends that's objectivity and in your choice and in that choice lies your freedom and growth friends that is objectivity fascinating thanks to great thinkers now further aspect on objectivity a great thinker another great thinker dennis waitley he says another practical aspect to objectivity he says change the changeable accept the unchangeable and remove yourself from the unacceptable three avenues of practicing objectivity change the changeable you having your your pizza and there is less salt the chilies you want and there is less salt and chilies they change the changeable it's not that you go pick up add it and have it change the changeable accept the unchangeable you are in the middle east in the summer time when you go out it is 40 degrees plus sweltering heat you are sweating accept the unchangeable summer will be hot period accept the unchangeable don't grumble don't complain accept the unchangeable and the third 
avenue to practice objectivity. Remove yourself from the unacceptable. Remove yourself from the unacceptable. You are in a group of with a pe group of people, and all these people are gossiping about others, and you are not comfortable about it because you know when I am also sitting and gossiping with them, once I leave, they're going to gossip about me. You are not comfortable. You are not comfortable when people gossip about others. You are not comfortable when people are laughing about others. You are a person who laughs with others. You don't. You are not a person who laughs at others. You are a person who wants to appreciate people. If they have done something well, you appreciate people. You are not a person who gossip about other people. So, the third way to practice objectivity: remove yourself from the unacceptable. Three ways to practice objectivity given by. Then is weekly. Change the changeable. Accept the unchangeable. And remove yourself from the unacceptable. Whereby you are using your intellect. Not the intelligence, not your ego. You are able to use your a strong a strength of your intellect, whereby you are able to discipline your mind. You're able to supervise the mind in such a way that you are in control of your choices and your choices help you to improve your quality of life. Friends, intelligence helps you in improving the standard of living, but a strong intellect, high value system, spiritual alignment, the our alignment with these lectures helps you to improve the quality of living. So what these masters say you will be peaceful tranquil happy not because of something you're peaceful happy tranquil in spite of everything in spite of whatever is happening externally within yourself there is tranquility because your mind doesn't disturb you you are aligning to the diet plan which you have which has been created by these masters Difficult conversations, observing the, the type of mind you have, then understanding, awareness, objectivity. Once you're able to do that, friends, let me tell you, you will not falter. You'll be at peace with yourself and you'll be at peace with the world around you. Finally, friends, mind impressions, as I mentioned, mind impressions. When you're alone, mind your thoughts. I repeat, when you're alone, mind your thoughts. When you're with friends, mind your attitude. When you're angry, mind your words. I repeat, when you're angry, mind your words. When you're with friends, mind your attitude. When you're with family, mind your behavior. When you're in trouble, mind your emotions. And when divinity bestows you with abundance, mind your ego. As they say, mind it. <laughs> when you're alone, mind your thoughts. When divinity bestows you with abundance, mind your ego. As these great philosophers and spiritual masters say, you're presented with two choices. You either evolve or repeat. We are given two choices. You either you can evolve or you can repeat the same experiences. As human beings, we are designed to be an evolving consciousness. So let us use this monumental opportunity called life and strengthen our intellect, make better choices, control the mind in such a way we become the best version of ourselves. That's my wish to myself and to one, and one and all to you. The R institution, mind and intellect is designed to help you give a diet plan, align with the diet plan and then eventually become the best version of yourself. Follow us on our social media, on Instagram, on Facebook and uh, you, know, you can join the WhatsApp community whereby you will get regular updates on our weekly lectures and we also share short videos on a on a weekly basis and there is also articles which we write and publish various ways various tools we have created to help yourself therefore friends 
As a result, please welcome yourself, align yourself in the best possible way, and then you will see in just a question of time, six months, nine months, you will become the best version of yourself. That's my commitment to you. And think about it. Have a great day ahead. Enjoy this uh, monumental ceremony called Guru Purnima. Best wishes to one and all. Take good care of yourself. Namaste.